Hello everybody and welcome back to Turning Tuesday. A couple of weeks ago, probably about a month ago, I was doing a demonstration at Axminster Tools and Machinery in Warrington. And after my demonstration, a guy called Nathaniel came up to me with this mysterious looking bag. And out of it, he pulled this thing. This is a segmented bulb blank that he has made for me and challenged me to make something out of it. I have no idea what this guy was thinking, but we are gonna give it a crack. Let's get going. So I've been looking at this bowl for a while, trying to work out how to attack it. Nathaniel was kind enough to glue this block onto the bottom of it to accept my screw faceplate thingamajig. So that will be mounted on the lathe like that, and then I can focus on hollowing it out, shaping the outside. It's shaping the base of it that I am a little bit stuck with at the moment, because normally when I do bowls, obviously I shape the bottom first and then hold the bottom in the chuck while I scoop out the inside of the bowl. However, in this case, I've already got access to the inside and I need to shape the outside. And like I've watched a few videos on it now and the way I'm gonna go about it is shape the inside first, then come around, start shaping the outside, get the entire thing sanded, and then literally just cut this bottom off, either using the bandsaw because I've got a flat reference face there, just gotta be careful as I push it through, or try and get a parting tool in there. Uh, no, I don't really wanna be doing that. I feel like that might explode. I'm either gonna cut it off on the bandsaw or by hand and then try and either plane, sand the base of it flat. And then I think, I think seeing as this is made of beach and beach takes a stain quite well, I think I might stain it. I've got a little bit back there. We'll give that a crack, I reckon. I keep saying we'll give it a crack. I'm a little bit worried that that's foreshadowing this thing blowing up, but I hope not. This guy's obviously put a lot of effort into this. By the way, I'm gonna stop chatting rubbish in a minute. A link to his Instagram is in the description below. Please give him a follow and tell him thank you for providing such great material for Matt Esley's Turning Tuesday. I thank you in advance. So wait, let me figure this out. I want to be, I want the final pass to be going with the grain, ideally. So then it's less stress on the bowl and therefore less likely to blow up. So if I'm going internally like that, is that going with the grain? I feel like that is. Wait, I don't know how you can go with the grain on this. Can you go with the grain on this? I can't work it out. Technically, I guess, because the grain is going sort of round the circumference of the bowl, as opposed to on a normal bowl, just going straight across it like that. I guess the whole thing is going with the grain and also vice versa against the grain. Whew, damn. I've got, there's a lot of pressure on me for this because when I, when I normally make bowls, I don't really care if it blows up because it's just down to my own stupidity and I'm the one who's putting all the work up until this point. But like Nathaniel's done a good job at making this. I don't want to blow it up. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Uh, mm, uh, Ah, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna sharpen my bowl gouge. That's a good way to productively procrastinate because that is the best kind of procrastination. Right, that was about two minutes of procrastination successfully carried out. To be honest though, I do remember having this same level of self-doubt when making my first bowl and just convincing myself that I was going to kill myself in trying to make this thing. And like, I'm not too worried about killing myself with this. I am just worried about blowing up someone else's hard work. I guess after watching my videos, he probably knows that's a risk though. I say a risk, almost a certainty. Right, let's go for it. Lovely slow speed to start with. Turn on the lathe, that would always help. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh. Okay, it's not too bad. Oh wow, that fills up quickly. Look at that! Whoa! Look at these shavings! <laughs> what a mess! Um, it's certainly interesting. 
interesting at the moment. I mean, looking pretty spectacular in there, nice and smooth. It's not too difficult to cut, to be honest. And apart from anything, I'm going to love cleaning up this mess. Look, one clump, two clump, three clump. In the bin, sorted. But like one thing I am just trying to work out now is how to transition, go and get in focus, how to transition this smooth bit into the flat base because there's something pretty wacky going on down there. And um, yeah, I'm just sort of trying to work out how much material I actually have in terms of the thickness to scoop out that base because this, I think all of these layers are the side and then these two are what makes up that base or at least that's what I've, um, that's what I've counted. So. There's not a lot of thickness there in order to create a shaped base. Might just be a case of um, having it primarily flat or something like that. But there is a little bit of glue in the corner that I've got to clean out still. So a few more scoops on these inside walls and then yeah, we'll see if we can get some sort of shape down there. I can't see what I'm doing. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, that's hot. Right, about to hit the base. Oh. Really worried about when I go in here, the wing of the tool catching on the base and like causing it to roll. How thick are we at the moment? And that is referring to the bowl. That's not, not referring to me. really struggling to work out how to do that transition from this side into the base. I don't want that to be like a hard 90 degree, well it's not going to be 90 degrees your pillock, but also getting in there to get out those glue lines is proving to be quite challenging as well. The only tool I think I have that may do it is the, um, the hollowing tool. So like if that will get in there, the radius on that should sort of match that internal corner and um, hopefully take it out and then I'll just shape the rest of it with a bowl gouge or scraper or whatever, whatever. Right, I think that's as good as I'm gonna get the side. I have sorted out the transition. There is a very shallow radius in there. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Managed to get out all the glue. There's a shallow dish in the bottom of the bowl. Needs a bit of smoothing out, but I'm struggling to do it with scrapers and bowl gouges and the other scraping hollowing tool that I've got. Nothing is doing that very consistently. And there's like a little bump there, a little bump here. I think sanding will, um, will get that out. Not that I like to rely on sandpaper, but it does get me out of sticky situations on the lathe. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go for that. Once I sand it, we can start doing the outside. So now it's time to start hollowing down the outside and uh, figure out how I'm actually going to separate this bowl. Before I do that, I am going to do a little work on this sort of upper rim here because I don't want to make that too thin before starting to shape that. Okay, so the outside's been shaped, a few lumps and bumps on it, but the uh, the trusty sandpaper will get rid of that. A little bit of a tear out in places, but I think that's to be expected where you're temporarily going against the grain then with the grain on some of the blocks. But to be honest, it's not too bad. I'm beginning to think about separating this now. I quite like the idea of just keeping this as like straight sided with a shallow curve sort of, well, you know what the inside looks like, but having the outside flat like that and then have a flat base on it that's actually got an angle on it. I haven't done something like that yet. All of them have just sort of sweeped around like a normal bowl would. I have got these two layers to perhaps shape something in, but I mean, look at that top edge. That's nice and straight at the moment. If that was just to sort of drop off and make this kind of pointless curve, then, well, as I said, it'd be pretty pointless, wouldn't it? I'm gonna keep it flat which means that I need to somehow separate it from this block after sanding. Right, I am going to finish the outside now while it's on the lathe, I reckon, and I am opting for dark oak wood dye because beech takes a stain very well and um, 
I mean, it'd just be rude not to, wouldn't it? Let's give it a shot. I think I'm only going to do the outside on this bowl. I quite like the idea of leaving the inside lighter, but realistically, knowing my clumsiness, I'm probably going to accidentally hit this top edge and therefore try and clean that up and then accidentally just like, it's probably going to end up being the whole thing at the end of it. I know it, but we will try and just make it the outside. I have full intentions of just making it the outside. So it's been a couple of hours by this point and I am going to do a finish a tongue oil on this I reckon. Nice and simple, quick drying and uh, allows me to get this thing off the lathe sooner rather than later. So to get the bowl off the chuck I am going to try a parting tool which I am not sure is the best idea on this block considering it's like a bowl blank i don't know if that's um bad practice or not to do that but i'm going to run it at a pretty low speed and i'm actually going to make the cut half on the bowl and half on that so in reality there shouldn't be too much stress on the parting tool and then i'll finish it off by hand or on the bandsaw afterwards Right, and there we go. My first ever segmented bowl is complete. Thank you once again to Nathaniel for helping me out with uh, the, the difficult part of this project. <laughs> I had a lot of fun turning this down and apart from anything, I've hardly got any mess to clean up, which I'm not gonna lie, is probably my most favorite thing about these segmented bowls. Like so much of the waste is already removed for you and the waste that does come out is all stringy and really easy to pick up. So yeah, that's a win-win. Um, the outside, the brown stain looks pretty good. I mean, it's very difficult to get stains like this even and consistent, I think. But to be honest, I quite like the look of that. It looks somewhat rustic-ish. And then you look inside and it just looks absolutely mental. He's done a really good job at making this. By the way, the guy who made this has won awards before. So a link to his Instagram is in the description below. I would be really thankful if you could follow him and just drop him a message saying that you uh, found him through watching this video. I'm sure he'll appreciate it. He's a very, um, very skilled guy looking at this. So. That's all for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please don't forget to press the like button below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.